What is up? Good morning. Day 47. I had to think about that for a second. I literally just looked. Day 47. We're doing well. Things are going. Things are going. Today, we're potentially bringing another partner in to the business. He's pitching us an offer. So we're going to take a look at it today. Good dude. Great work he's done. Great companies he has. It'd be exciting to work with him, but I don't feel any pressure, you know? It'd be really cool to get a new partner, to get kind of that investment and just that new vibe and all of that stuff. So that would be really cool, but I don't feel any pressure or anything. So I'm just open and, you know, ready to hear what he has to say. So that'll be interesting. What else? What else? Training. Ooh, leg extensions to failure. That was really good. And hip abductors. But I feel like I don't do a lot to failure. I got to get failure in once in a while just to feel how far it's going so I can get my RPE dialed in, my rate of perceived exertion. Make sure that that is heat up and I'm actually hitting my RPE as it should be. So um, that that would be the goal of hitting failure. Not regularly hitting failure because you're more injury prone if you're going that far, but to be able to know how far I should go for an RPE 8, 9, or 10, whatnot. I mean, 10 is obvious. That's failure. So... That was really great. Great leg day. Tomorrow will be a rest day, which will be good. It's good. This is second week of the program. I got to make sure I wake up on time, get get up out of bed right away because I add a set to all my, a working set to all my exercises, all my supersets. So we've got six more sets of work to do. So I just got to make sure that I'm up and I'm going and like today wasn't too terrible in terms of getting out and getting to school. So is I, I was maybe eight minutes later than I wanted. So if I'm more efficient, I can save that 10 or 15 minutes. That's the goal. It's tough. We had, we had some good conversation today. Also about AI. Uh, we talked a little bit AI at work, talked about AI at work <clears throat> because they had AI talking to each other. The open AI folk did. And it's interesting. And then we talked about like outsourcing our, our brain to AI, but really I'm excited about outsourcing menial tasks and kind of those things that a digital assistant can do, but a robot digital assistant, essentially like AI to provide context. So have AI listen in on the meeting and then come up with to do's and a summary and just better organize the notes and then maybe even schedule a follow-up with certain people as necessary. So have AI be able to handle some of that basic support work. And then it can provide me with feedback so I can actually make decisions and do the work. So it's really more of a feedback loop than a decision maker for me is, is what I think would work really well. I think we were talking about AI too on how People will outsource their brain. People will outsource their decision making. And, you know, essentially, what, what's the value of you? you? You kind of become a vegetable to some degree. It's kind of, kind of Wally-esque. So I was making the point yesterday that, yeah, there will be people who outsource themselves and are just power sources, essentially, you know, like the matrix, a vegetable with little value. But for those who don't do that, for those who take control, take hold of AI as a tool, as something that can enhance the work you're already doing or help you to get into new areas of work. If you use it as a tool, I think those people are going to rule the world. So I want to, I want to really get good with various AI tools. And certainly I use AI really well for writing, like writing, image generation, creative things like that, but I want it to be more useful for organization. Like maybe there is a tool that can do this, but why isn't there a tool that can basically plan out your social schedule, rough in a bunch of stuff and get that going? Is that the cop behind me? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I don't think it is. Just somebody with a light. Rough in your social media calendar and even with photos, like take a bunch of photos and rough in the content. So, you know, we generate a lot of video, we are going to generate blogs, we're going to generate a lot of images, or we do generate those things. And then as long as we provide a little bit of context to them, it'd be great if AI could schedule and rough up a bunch of work for us. And then we could go through, edit, 
modify, and finalize. So that would be my hope for AI with the marketing that we do. So this, yeah, this today went a little bit, you know, went to an interesting place. That was fun. I'm just invigorated, man. We've been doing some more planning with the business and that really invigorates me. And I think we're just the excellence that it is encouraging in me and encouraging in my partners. And then the excellence that it's going to encourage in the team, I think is going to be phenomenal. I I definitely have like a control issue that if I don't know how to communicate something, I'm like, "Ah, I'll just do it. And the reality is I need to be able to communicate whatever that thing is. I need to be better about communicating the need and the parameters of that need and then let somebody figure it out. And even if it's not 100% how I would do it, it's okay. So I did that yesterday for the first time. I feel like in a, in a significant way where we do a lot of web work and a lot of web proposals for websites and stuff. And what typically I'll do is I will take the meeting and take the notes and then put together a, a budget, but I'm not the one who does the design and not the one who does the coding. So it's hard for me to come up with that budget. So I work with the development team and the design team to figure that stuff out. But I often kind of get in the way. I kind of middleman it. And I'm like, well, here's the features and here's the website or whatever. But this time what I did is I said, here's what they said they want. Here's their website. And here's a few more details. You guys, the developers, come up with the scope of work. So leaning on the developers to analyze the website and decide what they need to do. Like they need this functionality, they need events, they need a group sign up, they need payment system, whatever it is. So the developers can analyze the site, come up with the scope of work, and then we can hand that off to the to our lead designer, Hannah, and she can go through that and, and then put her ideas in terms of design and design time And then that all comes back to me and then I can analyze it based on the meetings that I've had and the things that I've seen and I can go back to them and ask questions if I need. So I think that process is going to be best and I can get those proposals out faster because then I'm utilizing the work of the team and it's not being held up by me and my work. So I'm kind of excited to see how this goes. So they can figure out the technical details, come back to me. I can figure out if that vibes and jives with the conversations we've been having and then put together the proposal because I pitched the proposal and then I manage the team. So the proposal from the engineers has to make sense to me. And then I have to be able to convince the client of it. And then I have to manage the project as it's going and manage the client as it's going. So it kind of makes sense that I put myself in the middle there and I understand both sides of that coin. So that's kind of like a revelation for me. I think it should be good. I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see how that goes. Yeah, what else? Dude, we're doing Guac on the Rock tonight. It's going to be great. Guac on the Rock with some friends. So we'll get some Terramana. And uh, he's a lawyer friend. He's like, since you own a business, I can put it on the card. And what he doesn't know is I'm going to talk to him about business. I'll be like, all right, here's my scheme. What do you think? Like a nonprofit that can do good work, but also helps build my other business. So... I, I've worked with several nonprofits and foundations that that's how they're set up. So that's why it got me thinking in the realm of like Catholic filmmaking and Catholic media. I was like, oh, we should have a nonprofit that does that, that can support groups and then hires people in order to provide that service. So, you know, largely my company, because that's the service that I have, but it could be other stuff. So, all right, I got to sign off because I got a meeting to jump on something that just came up like an hour ago. So. Thanks for hanging. If you're on YouTube, hit the bell, like, subscribe, do all the things. If you're on TikTok, please do follow. We've got a lot of content. I've got a lot of content I'm trying to create. I'm going to do a hundred of these freaking things. As a fitness person, uh, an amateur bodybuilder, an athletic physique enthusiast, I know that it's important to get your reps in. So to be able to do this a bunch of times and get my reps in, is critically important and that's what i'm doing i'm going to try to just create a lot of video and see how it works so i do have other fun stuff that i post check that out thanks for hanging do good be great see you tomorrow bye